What's up, guys, ladies and gentlemen, agents all over the world. Hope everybody's doing okay today. Um, we are live. We're Instagram live. We're Facebook live. So anyway, I'm um, going we'll to give everybody a minute to hop on, make sure all our everything is good to go. Yep, yep. We're live everywhere. What's up, Robert? Hope you're doing well, brother. It was good to meet you that time in Vegas. Maybe we'll meet again sometime soon. I forget exactly where your market is. Um, where is your market? What's up, Curtis? Hope you're doing well, man. I'm just going to give some time for everybody to come online. What's up, everybody on Instagram? Just giving everybody some time to get online here before I get started on this week's show, which is how to create your own leads. Um, I've been selling real estate for a long time, long before Facebook, Zillow, and all that good stuff. And uh, what's up, Rebecca, John? And uh, I had I, I grew up in the business so to speak, before there were any such thing as online leads, Facebook leads, Boomtown, Zillow, all this stuff. So I had to build my business the old fashioned way. And it's so funny because right now, even with as far as technology has gone, it's still the most effective way to build your business. So I'm gonna give everybody a little, a little bit more time to log in. What's up, Elise? Jamie, Heather, Ken, Bruce, Cheryl. Hope everybody's doing well today. I'm going to give a couple more seconds, but um, just to let everybody know that's watching this on the replay, if you want to watch live, it's on the Facebook group, Zero to Diamond. And um, if you have any questions for me, feel free to just type it in. That's what this is all about. This is me giving my time back to you guys to help you. Um, you know, it's like people... Agents are, are, are around the world are struggling to survive, and it's the same thing I went through when I was an agent, or when I was, you know, a newer agent. So this is my way to give back to you guys to help you make it through the same struggles that I went through. And believe me, I understand it is tough, super tough. What's up, Bruce? Hope you're doing well, man. So real quick, um, a couple of announcements. What's up, John? Um, I just got called by Remax Corporate. I'm going to Kansas City uh, to do a talk up there October 24th at the Tech & Touch. So if you're a Remax agent and you're around the Kansas City area, um, I'll be there October 24th. Um, Bruce is actually trying to put together something for me in Chicago the first week of November. And if you're a Keller Williams agent in Pensacola, um, next Tuesday, not this coming Tuesday, but next Tuesday, I'll be there doing a mastermind session. And I'm trying to put something together in Jackson, Mississippi, um, so and Baton Rouge. So if you guys are in any of those areas, um, I'll be in those all those areas before the year's out. So get with me. And if you're not part associated with the company I'm coming to speak to, we can at least meet and do some lunch or, or quick a catch, catch a quick coffee or something like that. Elise says, come to Ohio. Elise, um, put together something for me. Um, put together, a, you know, if you have a company that has a lot of agents, I can come speak to and you guys will pay my travel. I'll come up there. So put it together for me. I'll come up there. What's up, Billy Hill? Just give everybody a chance to log on before we get started here. We're going to be talking about creating our own leads, um, something I believe in so much. Um, what's up, Dusty? Yeah, I believe in creating your own leads so much. Like I think that new agents, they were thrown into this technology-based world where you can just buy leads. And I think if the market crashes, what's up, Chris? I think if the market crashes or there's a market downturn, those leads are going to dry up. Then what are you going to do, right? The only way to make your business recession-proof 
is having the ability to create your own leads. Um, you, you know, you're not going to survive a crash. You're not going to weather the storm if you're depending on other sources to bring you leads. On top of the fact that those other sources control all the leads. You know, you're paying them, I don't know how much, a lot of money to get these leads. And there could be some, some kind of weird thing, policy change. They could give all the leads to somebody paying more money. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on. I just, I've never been dependent on anybody else giving me leads. It's just not going to happen. I'm very independent and I'm going to build my business the right way and I'm going to make it happen. So, um, yeah. So anyway, to create your own leads, you have to understand a couple things. Number one, who are, what's up? What's up, Jeremy? Number one, you have to understand. You guys, if you have any questions, just let me know. Type it in. I'll be glad to answer. That's what this is all about. Um, this week has been super good for me. Uh, I put two properties under contract this morning. I'm working on a third, trying to get it done. I've gotten several listings um, this week. My listings, I have so many listings. I have 43 active listings. I'm working on a couple others and I have 13 under contract listings. And then I've got two or three buyers under contract. So I'm looking pretty good, but not as good as I want to look. But that's because the market's been lagging through the end of the summer. Um, so over the next 30 days, our fall market's going to hit and all these listings I have are going to sell. So I'm looking to have a super busy fall and end the year strong because I took the time that the market was slow at the end of the summer. I took that time and I focused on getting more listings and growing my inventory for when the market starts to have the fall rush. So, I mean, I am super excited about the end of the year. Um, I'm almost to 100 deals closed. I'm at like 97. And so I'm, I'm, I want to cross that 100 mark here next week. I think I'm going to cross the 100 mark. So that's going to be another my fourth year in a row to cross 100 deals as a single agent. Um, so I feel like my strategies can help so many people. Um, it's like the proofs in the pudding. You know, it's like it's like if you want to succeed at the highest level, you have to find somebody who's doing what you want to do at the level that you want to do it or higher and then figure out what that person's doing. So here I am like, like I'm making, a, I'm doing a hundred deals a year as a single agent and I'm willing to share every single little thing about my business with you guys. So anyway, Martel, what's up buddy? Hope you're doing well, man. So I want to get into creating your own leads. Um, First off, we have to understand like who, who, what are, what are, what are the leads that we need to be going after? You know, what, what lead is going to constitute like a recession proof type lead? Um, everybody knows where I stand on this is property owners. Um, if you can become very skilled and highly talented at being very likable with everyone you meet, and then you go after the highest quality prospect in every market, which is a property owner, and you can win them over as a person, then you're going to win. I mean, that's really the most simplest bottom line, um, you know, way that I can put how to be super successful in real estate. Let's see. Elise says, that's where you come in. Agents don't like to share ideas. I appreciate it so much. Yeah. I'll share every single little thing. I'm a total open book. What's up, Bernie? I'm a total open book for you guys. Um, you can ask me anything, anytime, anywhere. Call me. I answer my phone. Email me. I'll email you right back. I mean, it's it's just it's easy for me to to want to give back um, because it's helping people. The more people you help, the more successful you're going to be. That's just the bottom line. What's up, Lisa? Lisa's one of our newest coaching uh, on, on, on coaching members of Zero to Diamond. Um, so like I was saying, like the more people that you help, that's the more successful you'll be. So um, if you're not helping people, like if you're only out to try to make a deal happen or if you if you if you have this long list of objection handlers 
and you're only trying to win the, the deal over and make them sign the line, people are going to see right through that and they're going to be turned off. Sure, you might get a couple deals like that. But at the end of the day, you're never going to get to 100 deals a year consistently, right? And next week, I'll cross 100 deals for the year for the fourth year in a row. That is consistency, guys. And I'm not saying it's a brag. I'm just proud of the fact that I've worked so hard to get where I'm at and to do 100 deals a year for the past four years to me is unbelievable. Like, I can't even believe it that it's happened, that it's happening. Um, and I'm always trying to get better. That's why I'm doing this with you guys. I'm learning so much back from you guys, by the way. What's up, Chip? So the number one, the, the highest quality lead in any market is property owners that own property in the niche market you want to sell. These are the people that you want to create relationships with, right? So you have to become very skilled at creating the relationship, which is the point of contact. You know, that first point of contact needs to be like, like how people want to try to close the deal. That first conversation needs to be, you need to close the deal on creating the relationship. Um, that's where you, that's where you, you know, close the deal. It's not that you got them to sign a listing or you got them to sign a purchase agreement. It's that you, that they said that you asked them, Hey, you don't have an agent, right? Well, one day you're going to want to buy or sell something. And I would just like the opportunity to stay in touch with you. Is that okay? And they say, yeah, that's a win. That's what most agents fall short on. They don't go after that long-term business that's sitting right there in front of them. What's up, Richard? Blake, Bernie. Bernie says, you're an inspiration. Thanks for always sharing and leading by example. That's really what it's all about, guys. If you're going to try to lead people, be a coach, be a mentor, be a trainer, um, in, my, in my opinion, you need to practice what you preach. You need to be somebody who's actually put yourself on the line and have the results that everybody else is looking for um, before you can actually have the audacity to, to step out and say, oh, I'm an expert or I can show you how to do something. Um, I haven't said anything about my business or how, how great I've been doing or haven't been doing for my entire career. For 15 years, I haven't said anything about it until this year. And the only reason I'm saying something about it is because I want to help people. And I can't do that unless you guys realize the results that I've had. Right. And then once you realize the results that I've had, then it's like, OK, this guy's done this. He knows how to do this. He can help me do this. And that's what it's all about. What's up, Vic? That's my man, Vic, over there. Sacramento. So I don't know where I was exactly. But but when you in my in my mind and what I want to want to get across to all of you is that the close is in creating the relationship, not closing the deal, not get them to sign a listing or, or a purchase agreement. So how do we do it? Like, how do we create, what's up, Jamal? How do we create our own leads? Um, well, it goes back to when I started real estate, there was no Facebook, Zillow, none of that stuff. I don't even think YouTube didn't even exist. Um, I had to pick up the phone, right? But going through that in the beginning of my career, not having technology necessarily on my side and having to actually fight through making 100 calls a day without a phone dialer, without any system that looks up the numbers for me, without any of that stuff, and having to go through that struggle of building a seven-figure business without technology, and then to blow past um, the, the error where technology and is now very relevant and to see what technology has done. Um, it, it, it's mind blowing because when, when I look back and I think about the beginning of my career and then I take a, I take a close look at my career now, it's not a whole lot different, right? Like the point of contact, maybe you can, you, maybe you can start conversations differently than making cold calls, which is what I preach. You know, cold calls and prospecting to property owners that you that own property you want to sell. Maybe maybe it's turned into the point of contact can be made through many different other avenues, which is fine. 
But here's the point of it. The point is that um, there still has to be a point of contact and then a conversation, like a real live conversation has to be made for there to actually be a creation of a relationship. Um, maybe you go back and forth on Facebook, you message back and forth, they get to know you a little bit by what you post, um, Instagram, you know, maybe they, they get to know you a little bit by that and you message back and forth and you get to know each other a little bit. But I'm telling you, without a, you, you will never do a deal just without ever talking to your client. Maybe one in a thousand you'll maybe do with never talking to your client. Well, one thousandth of deals is not enough to survive on. So let's concentrate on the 999 deals out of a thousand that actually have to have a real live conversation to have a closing. What's up, Virginia? Carlin, what's happening? So what I'm getting at is that technology may have introduced new ways of to, to introduce each other and to create points of contact where we get to know each other. But however, the deal has not changed where you actually have to have a conversation to close the deal. Um, so what I'm getting at is to me, picking up the phone, using Red X the way I ask you to, using my phone scripts to not go after the deal, but go after the email address, go after the relationship, make sure they don't have a, a, a relationship already in place with another agent, make sure there's nothing you can do to help them, um, let them know that, you know, that's, that's fine. One day you're going to want to buy or sell something and I would just like the opportunity to stay in touch with you. Is that all right? These are all key phrases and key ideas that you have to adopt. Um, and you have to real, it's a mindset. It took me a long, long time guys to figure this out that the way that I speak to people and the words that I use, you know, whenever you call people up and say, hey, can I kind of help you? They say no. Say, well, OK, well, who do you know that that might want to buy or sell something? To me, that's a red flag saying that you as the real estate agent are just looking out for yourself and you don't really care to really help this person you're talking to. You're just looking for them or anybody they know that might be able to help you. It's just little things like that, that really, if you adopt the mindset um, to be more a relationship based business. It goes so far in the long run. Have you guys ever read The Compound Effect by Darren Hardy or The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson? It's basically almost the same book, just wrote by two different guys. I actually like The Slight Edge a little more, but the point is that a little by little every day ends up being huge over the course of 5, 10, 20, 30 years. It's the same thing with putting money in the stock market of a dividend paying stock. If you just put it there and leave it there and, and reinvest the dividend back into the stock, it turns into a huge situation in 10, 20, 30 years. It's the same thing. With, this is the same idea that I'm trying to explain to you guys about mindset around relationship. And it's the little things that count. Doing these little things right will add up to so many relationships over time. It's like it took me six years to figure this out. OK, six years in real estate, going through a crash to figure this out. What's up, Tony? What's happening, my man? Jamie, Amber, what's happening? So it took me six years to figure this out. And then once I figured it out, it took me another six years of 14 hours a day to get to 100 deals a year. And actually 10 years from when I figured it out to get to my ultimate goal, which is seven figures in a year. This year will be the first year I do that. Um, so what I'm saying is, is the reason it's happening to me right now is because I adopted all of these mindsets and all these ideas early. Ten years ago, I actually adopted all of these mindsets um, and, and ideas in my brain that have added up over the years to hundreds and hundreds of extra relationships that I wouldn't have had if I wouldn't have had this mindset. What's up, Carol? So I don't really care exactly. OK, guys, I want you to know, like, I'm not against any avenue of creating leads. OK, I just want to br break across to you that 
If you're buying your leads and the market crashes, those leads are going to dry up. Now, if you're, if you're getting leads that you're buying and you're paying for and you're converting them and you're making deals, you're creating relationships with those people for life, you're, you're staying in touch with them after the deal for the rest of their life, and you're building your business the right way, you still can't go wrong, right? But at the end of the day, if the market does crash, you're going to want to start calling property owners and asking them, how can you help them through the crash? What can you do for them? Do they want to buy, sell, or hold? Real estate can be such a recession-proof business. What's up, Albert? Good to have you on the show today, man. Maggie, what's happening? Real estate can be such a recession-proof business um, if you think about it the right way. Um, I'm not worried whatsoever about market crashing um, or, or anything. I had a guy um, talking to me today that was trying to tell me about this Trump thing and this race thing and, um, you know, North Korea and, and all this stuff. And uh, wait a minute, let me get the right background. Anyway, um, trying to tell me all about this North Korea stuff and, and all that. And, and I was like, what are you talking about? Now, I pay attention to it just a little bit, right, to know that something's going on. But I don't know all the details of a lot of this stuff because I'm too focused on my business and my family, right? Like if you, you have to focus out all the negative stuff and all the distractions and everything that's going to scare you, right? This is scare tactics. You know, the news is trying to scare you into thinking all this stuff that's never going to happen. Maybe it does happen, right? If it's going to happen, it's going to happen and I'll deal with it at that time. For the moment being, I'm going to concentrate on growing my business so that I can be successful and help everyone around me, my family, my friends, my coworkers. If you're not successful, no one around you is successful. If you're successful, you can help everyone, not only around you, but maybe even the world at some point, which is what I'm trying to do now. Um, and in order to do that, you have to be focused. You have to be like laser obsessed with what you got going on. For me, it's real estate. It's zero to diamond. It's my future wife. It's my dogs. It's my mom. It's my dad. Right. It's all those factors. Um, it's hard for me to focus on anything else as far as giving me giving it my all. Because number one, I know it's just scare tactics. And number two, I'm too focused on other things. So. Focus on your business. Um, don't let all the worries of the world get to you. Um, it's the same way with when I have a lot of properties under contract or a lot of listings. People are like, how do you handle it? And the fact is, is that I don't worry about it. I don't worry about North Korea and I don't worry about my listings, if they're going to sell or not. I'm going to stay in good contact with my seller and let him know what's going on and you know, that everything's okay and that I'm going to stay in touch with them regardless if it sells or not or if anybody's showing it. You know, we're buddies now for life. My clients are my extended family and we're buddies for life. So don't let stuff distract you. Stay focused. And, you know, I, I'm just one guy. I'm just one guy that is doing really well. I'm in South Alabama. Our population is 18,000 people in Gulf Shores, Orange Beach combined. Um, I'm at, I'm fixing across 100 deals for the fourth year in a row. And the only reason I say that is to let you guys know that I know what I'm talking about. And I want you guys to use me as a resource um, to figure out how you can succeed. So that's what it's all about for me. Um, I kind of went on a little rant there, but... Um, I appreciate you guys so much. Number one, listening. Um, do you guys have any questions? Because, you know, I'm actually going to switch over. I created a private um, Zero to Diamond Facebook group just for members only. And I'm going to answer every single question I get on here. But when we're done, I'm going to switch over to the private member group. And we're going to talk about fear making phone calls. Uh, I want to I touch on you know, people's fears of making calls. And I think that's something that we really need to hit on. So I'm going to have a little session with just members, uh, just my coaching um, group about that here. Um, as soon as we get through with this, 
but please do type in your questions and know that you can ask me anything at any time. Use me as a resource. <coughs> What's up on Instagram? What's up, Victor? Ronnie. So I'm going to hang out with you guys for a minute longer. I hope that I inspired you to understand how to create a recession-proof real estate business. It's so easy. And also, guys, business is so unlimited. There's a new agent um, that I've been coaching in my market. Um, he's going to make $100,000 his first year. He came to the office. We had a conversation um, earlier, and he was telling me how excited he is to realize that it's unlimited. Like you, there, you, there, you can, there's more than you can ever do. You, there's just as much as you want to do, you do. Um, business is unlimited, and um, and he sees that. And I said, that's great. But the next thing you need to realize is that you can't, you don't need to be scared about a market crash. Once you realize business is unlimited and that you don't have to be scared about a market crash, now it's like, boom, man, like I, I, I'm good. Like I, I don't, I'm not worried about anything. I know that I can sell property, you know, unlimitedly, uh, whether the market's great or the market's crashing. Um, you know, it goes both ways. Um, Another thing, um, I don't know if you guys have been watching the Daily Grind show that I've been doing. We're on episode eight. We released episode nine and ten are recorded. We're going to put those out next week. I hope you guys have been enjoying that because that shows I'm doing that to show you guys how hard I work every day and the struggles that I go through. And, you know, we're going to just take it as far as it can go. Um, what's up, Marion? We're going to go as far as we can with it. And because, you know, I want people to know that. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. I got a question on Instagram here. Do you think it's best to focus on just cold calling, just door knocking or a combination of both? Let me repeat the question, guys. Do you think it's best to focus on just cold calling, just door knocking or a combination of both? What's up, Anthony? Coach Kaiser. I think it's I think it's best to focus on just cold calling. That's my personal experience. Um, you can sit in the office and make way more calls, in my opinion, and talk to way more. What's up, Glee? And talk to way more people um, over the phone than you can uh, by door knocking. But you can use door knocking to kind of break up the, 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 the you know, the pattern of making calls day in and day out. You know, make calls for a couple of days, two or three days and then go door knock. But what I would not do is use door knocking as an excuse not to make phone calls. Um, always prioritize making phone calls over door knocking. Always, um, you know, y'all, you can, you can, you can use, like I said, do both, but do more of the cold calling and make sure you're focused on that as a priority over the over the door knocking. Your phone calls are number one. Door knocking is either non-existent. Completely or very, very, very low secondary option. But if you're making the calls you need to make, you're going to have the appointments you need to have. You're going to have the lunch appointments. You're going to get the emails. You're going to be doing all the zero to diamond stuff you need to be doing. Um, that's how I built my business. So what else I got going on? We're doing a group coaching call Monday at 2 p.m. Central for all members. I'll email everybody tomorrow your um, your phone number and your PIN number so you can get in on that call. Let me know if you guys have any questions before I go here. I'm going to switch over to the uh, to the coaching group here shortly. Uh, OK, wait, let's see here. Let's see here. I got another comment here. Jonathan team says. It's starting to work for me. I have recently been contacted by multiple people about listing appointments. These are people that I cold called one time, got their email, and started sending my weekly updates. I've been doing this for eight months. I have nine active listings, and five of those are from people that I cold called, and the others are from my circle of people, friends and family. Thanks for being so transparent, buddy. It works. So basically what John's saying is that um, I've coached John and I've told him exactly what to do. And so it took a long time for him to actually start seeing some of these results. 
Um, but he's been at it for nine months. He's gotten five listings off people that he cold called and started sending his reports to, and then they called him back. He's following the zero to diamond system and he's seeing results. Guys, if you don't know, I've only been doing the zero to diamond thing for four to five months now, something like that. Um, you know, it takes longer than that to, 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 to mold a million dollar real estate agent. It took me 10 years to get, you know, once I learned everything to get to a seven figure income. So it's not going to happen overnight, but you guys are going to see over time, you're going to see people that are taking on my advice. You're going to see people that, that believe in it and go all in with what I'm saying. And you're going to see people that have huge, huge results. And if you're not one of these people and you keep doing these other things, these other distractions and stuff, you're going to realize that you should have been on this train a long time ago, but it's never too late. Carol says, how do you recover from life and keep going? My dad was taking ER last night. I came to work this morning with three hours of sleep, had a meeting at 830. How do you do it? By the way, he's OK, by the way, but man, hard to concentrate. What's up, Cousin Patrick? So basically, um, you know, yesterday I had to take my mom to the emergency room as well. She called me. I was at lunch with some clients and she has been going through something. And so I had to rush her to the emergency room at maybe one or two o'clock. And uh, so I know exactly what you mean. But see, that's just life. See, I don't see business like business and life are kind of it is my life you know like like business and then like walking the dogs and then like going to work out and then taking care of my grandma every tuesday we take her dinner what's up matt and doing all that stuff that's all the same thing to me like work and life are like it's the same thing like i give it all i have if, if, I have a, if I have a call, spur of the moment, somebody wants to see some properties, I drop everything I do. I'm going to go do that. If that's what I decide to do. If, uh, you know, and then I have to figure out everything else later. All the other stuff I had going on, I have to figure that out later. If my mom calls and needs to go to the emergency room, she's OK, by the way. Thank you, Glee. Um, if she needs to go to the emergency room, I'm going to drop what I'm doing. I'm going to do it. Um, I'm going to be there for her. I'm going to figure out everything else later. Um, it's, it's, uh, there's no, like, I don't shut, I don't turn on business and then turn off business. When I get up in the morning to go work out at the gym at seven o'clock, five days a week, I'm work. That's me working. Like that's me living and working and like trying to be the best human being I can be. So if I get tired and I need a nap or something, which never happens, I've never taken a nap. I don't know what that means, but if I needed to, if my body said, shut down, Ricky, then I'm going to shut down. I'm going to go take care of that. Um, I do stay up really late and, uh, and write. I write blogs. I write books. Um, I'm, I'm editing videos for you guys. I'm doing all kinds of stuff at night behind the scenes. I'll stay up really late and do that kind of stuff to like midnight, and then I'll get up at 5 o'clock to go to the gym. Um, but I posted something earlier on Facebook. Um, and it said, I'll sleep when I die. And that's my motto right now. <clears throat> you know, when people are telling you, you need to slow down, you're working too hard, all that stuff. That just tells me I need to start working harder because if you really want something and you really believe in what you're doing, you have passion for it, then it's like you're not working. You're doing what you love to do. This is this is what you were born to do. So. It's all about how you think about it and how you, you know, want to be perceived at the end of the day. Um, but I know what you mean, Carol. And I just think that you have to have a burning desire inside of you that says, you know, you don't this. Nothing's going to hold me back. Like, I'm just going to do this. I know what I need to do. I need to talk to property owners. I know I need to go to appointments. I know I need to list properties. I know I need to show properties, write contracts, negotiate deals, and take my dad to the hospital, feed my dogs, you know, work out. It's all the same stuff. It's you trying to be a better human being um, and trying to be as successful as you can so that all those around you can benefit. So I don't know. That's a long winded, winded answer, but um, 
you know, I get asked that sometimes and uh, I just have something inside of me that makes me go like there's no stop. There's just no stop. So anyway, um, you guys type some questions below on Instagram or Facebook uh, and let me know if you have any questions whatsoever. I'm going to hang out for as long as I need to to answer all of you guys' questions. Um, let's see. I think I mentioned it earlier. I'm going to be in Chicago, I believe. We're trying to firm it up first week of November. So if any of you guys are in Chicago uh, or around Chicago the first week of November, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do a talk up there and hang out with you guys for a day or two. <clears throat> So I'm really looking forward to that if you're in the Chicago area. I'm going to be in Kansas City if you're a REMAX agent. I'm going to be at the Tech & Touch in, in uh, Kansas City, um, October 24th. You guys ask me any question you want to. I'm just kind of going over um, my schedule for the rest of the year in case any of you guys are in any of these towns. I'm trying to firm up something with Jackson, Mississippi and Baton Rouge. And I'll be in Pensacola, not this Tuesday, but next Tuesday at Keller Williams. So if you guys are in any of those locations, I would love to meet you and hang out with you for a bit and answer any questions that you might have. Um, if you haven't already, subscribe to my YouTube channel, YouTube backslash Ricky Carruth, um, because I post all these Ask Ricky Live shows as well as my daily grind show. That's an inside look behind the scenes at everything that I do. Um, so I hope you guys are taking advantage of that. They're only three to four or five minutes a piece. And it really gives you an idea of what I go through on a daily basis and what I got on my mind. This show today will be on the Daily Grind show number 10. So, super motivated right now. I'm super motivated right now. Um, I'm really, really excited because the market's been slow. And that's when my business grows the most. I've, I've been picking up so many listings right now. I have so many good listings. I'm so excited about the fall market, and I'm hoping that if it happens like I'm thinking it'll happen, it's just my business is going to explode, and that the year is going to end out so strong. So I'm looking forward to it, man. I'm just I'm over 32 million so far. I'm getting close to 33 million on the year closed. I want to hit 50 million. So. Uh, Anyway, I'm going to switch over to the private group now. We're going to talk about um, getting over our fears of making cold calls. And uh, But you guys can still ask me questions. Just hit me up. I'll answer my phone. I'll answer a text, an email. Anything I can do for you, please let me know. Otherwise, finish the week strong. Um, have a good rest of your day. And, uh, you know, Zero to Diamond members, I'll see you in a minute. Everybody else, I'll see you on the public group. And, uh, you know, I'm here if you need anything whatsoever. We'll talk to you guys soon.